In this tutorial, you will learn how to create complete forests in under 1 minute and we will go over why, when and how to use procedural foliage in Unreal Engine. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials in the future and leave a like if you found this video informative. And now, without any further ado, let's jump right into Unreal Engine and see how everything works. First of all, let's start with why and when to use procedural foliage. This method is especially useful when working with organic foliage such as trees, rocks and grass and can be used pretty much every time. Does that mean you should? Not at all. Procedural foliage can lead to bad placement of the foliage and can do the opposite of organic placement. Generally, the rule of thumb is when you are dealing with large landscapes, procedural foliage can help a ton. And if you are careful enough, you can get around the bad placement. And even if you ever have any problems with the procedurally generated foliage, you can always block a part from spawning foliage by using a special component, which we will talk about in a bit. And then you can manually place the trees using the traditional foliage tool. The reason you should use procedural foliage is its ease of use. You can quickly achieve amazing results in just a matter of seconds. My recommendation is, whenever you can use it, you should as you'll have more time to focus on other parts that are lacking at that moment. Now let's see how we can create procedural foliage. First things first, this is an experimental feature. That means that we will first have to enable it. We can do that by going to Edit, Editor Preferences, then we will have to search for the name, and that is Procedural Foliage. And I can already see it here. So let's enable this, and then we will have to restart the engine. After restarting, we will be able to go to Content Browser, right click, then let's go to Foliage and get a static mesh foliage. I'm going to name this FT underline tree. FT comes from the old way of saying this, that is foliage type. Now let's do that once again, right click, foliage and get a procedural foliage spawner. And I'm going to call this tree underline PFS. Now let's go ahead and open this and you're going to notice here foliage types. Here is where we're going to plug our F3 underline tree. So let's click on the plus button select it and click on the arrow. Okay, but before continuing to spawn this, we will have to set up the FT underline tree. The most basic setting we have to change is the mesh. We need to supply it with one so it knows what to spawn. So I'm going to go to procedural ecosystem, meshes, trees, pine, and choose one from here. And now we can get the PFS, drag it into the world. Let's scale it up, I'm going to go with 20. And now if you're going to go to resimulate and press it, you will be able to see the trees spawning. And this is already a pretty nice result. But there are two problems that I can immediately spot. There are too many trees and these trees are aligned to the normal. So what we can do to fix those, first of all, we can go to collision, then shade radius and set this to a bigger number. And this is basically like a sphere component around every tree that is basically saying, hey, don't spawn any other tree in this radius. And then for the alignment, we can just go and search for align to normal. Let's save and now let's go ahead and resimulate. And we can already see how much better this is. There are less trees and these are going to be aligned upwards. And you might have spotted a pattern. Most of these options that you can see in here come from the foliage mode. So if you're already accustomed to the traditional foliage tool, you're going to have an easy time transitioning to this type. Now let's go ahead and see what else we can do with this. As I said, this is a very powerful tool and we're not going to cover everything in here, but if you want more advanced tutorials on this topic, make sure to let me know down below. Okay, one more problem that I can spot is the size. These are pretty equal, so we can change it by going back to the foliage type and let's go to growth and let's set the maximum age to 30. Let's save and now let's go to resimulate and not much has changed. The reason for this happening is because of the procedural scale. The minimum is fine, but the maximum is not. We need to change this to a greater value. So let's go ahead and set this to 30 and see what is going to happen. Let's save and let's resimulate. And you can see how there are less trees, but there is one that is gigantic. There are less trees because we set the shade radius to be 30, which is a bit too much for this, mostly because this tree is so big. But we can adjust this by going back in here and instead of setting this to 30, we can choose something like 50. Let's save, let's go back to resimulate, and now we can see that there is just the right amount of trees and also the size varies a lot. Okay, now let's go ahead and duplicate this FT underline tree. Then let's go in the PFS, let's create another foliage type and assign to this one the FT underline tree one. Now if I'm going to resimulate like this, nothing is going to change because both trees are basically the same. To fix that, let's open up FT underline tree one and let's change the mesh to something else. I'm going to choose something from winter so we can easily spot the difference and then let's go ahead and save and set the size of the foliage spawner to something higher so we can see more trees on the screen. Let's resimulate and we'll be able to see 
that there are more types of trees. Well, by more I mean only two, but there is a difference between the normal type and the winter type. And with this tool you can use as many trees as you want. You can use 50 types, you can use 100 types, it doesn't matter. It is going to neatly distribute them in this volume and you're not going to have to worry about variation. Okay, now let's go ahead and make this even larger. Let's make it 300 and then let's try to simulate. Now let's say that you don't like how things are distributed. You can go to the spawner and you can change this random seed. Let's set it to 45, let's save and let's re-simulate. And now you can see how everything changed. Okay, now that we got all that down, we know how we can create procedural foliage. But currently this is not playable. If I were to have a character in here, the character would not be able to move through the forest. To fix that, Epic implemented procedural foliage blocking volumes. Let's drag one of these in here and let's see how they work. First they're pretty small, so let's scale them up. I'm going to go with 100 on the Y axis, let's go with 50 on the Z and 10 on the X. Okay, now you can see that it is pretty big. Let's go to the procedural foliage spawner and let's re-simulate. Now you can see how this entire path is going to be cleared of trees. And now with this you can easily make paths through the forest. Let's say that you want to make the main path and then this is going to split into two. You can make this by copying it and then rotating it a bit, moving it here, then copy it once again, rotate the other side, move it right in here, and then we can go back to the foliage spawner, let's go back to perspective, let's re-simulate, and now we can see the path, one to the left side, and one to the right side. And this is only a simple example. You can go ahead and create a lot of other stuff with this. Lastly, I want to show you a real example of how this could be used in a game. We are once again going to make a forest, but this time it is going to be complete. And by complete, I mean five types of rocks and seven types of trees. Now, before simulating the foliage, let me go ahead and show you how these are set up. As we did before, I just supply the tree for the tree types, disable the line to normal, set the initial density to something higher so we have a dense forest, then enable the can grow in shade option. This is going to ignore the shade radius of the collision part, set the maximum age to 30 and the maximum from procedural scale to 15. And this is how pretty much all of the tree types are set up. Some have lower values for the maximum age and density, but that's about it. As for the rocks, I've changed nothing, I only supply the mesh and that's it. And before simulating, I also want to show you how I place my procedural foliage blocking volumes. They're pretty much only on the path, because obviously we do not want trees on the path itself. Also one thing that I forgot to show is that if you're going to make a custom brush shape, you can set it from here. You go to brush settings and set the brush shape. Currently I don't have one, but if you need one you can go ahead, create it and then use it in here. Okay, let's go to the foliage spawner and let's re-simulate and let's see how this looks. So you can see how from one click I managed to create an entire forest. Obviously this isn't perfect because we still have trees like this, but these are problems that can easily be fixed. And if we are going to take a look in the forest itself, we can actually spot some rocks maybe. Yeah, as you can see right here, here and all that. The organic feeling of this forest is going to give credibility to it and also these rocks help a lot with that. And this could even be a playable level. As long as you add some other objectives and maybe a house or something like that, you could use this in a game. So now I hope that you understand just how powerful this is even if you're going to keep it simple. You can make a process that sometimes takes 30 minutes and complete it in only one click by pressing this button. And things can become even more complex but still a symbol when you have multiple biomes. Let's say you have pine trees and birch trees and then you can just have multiple spawners, that's not a problem. And the great part about this is that it doesn't affect the performance. Both the procedural spawner and the foliage tool have the same impact as these aren't created at runtime. So you can freely use this whenever you feel like doing that and when it helps you out. And that is everything for this video about procedural foliage. Hopefully by now you understand how powerful this method of adding foliage is and when to use it. If you found this video informative, consider subscribing if you haven't already to stay up to date with upcoming videos and leave a like if you like this video as that would help me a lot to see if you're interested in this kind of videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons for supporting me this month and not only and especially to these top tier supporters. Butterl Kaktani, Tarklich and Wally, Golden Glowmaster, Leonardo Pereira and Xin369. For more resources regarding this video, make sure to visit its description. Once again, thank you so much for watching, see you again soon.